Okay, section 1.8. I know you're saying, wait a minute, this is what we did yesterday, but this isn't what we're doing today. We're actually doing section 1.8. I left that up here to demonstrate something to you. In section 1.8, we're going to be dividing integers. And we need to talk about the rules for dividing integers. Instead of you multiplying the numbers, you're going to divide the numbers. All these other rules are exactly the same. Nothing changes. In fact, you can even use the same trick if they have you dividing a lot of numbers in a row. The same trick of if it's an even number of, of negative signs, then your answer is going to be positive. If it's an odd number of negative signs, your answer is going to be negative. Same rules apply, all the same stuff. All we're doing instead is dividing. So let's look at a couple of examples. Negative 81 divided by 3. Because a fraction bar is just like division. 3 goes into 81 27 times. Different signs means our answer must be negative. So it's a negative 27. Didn't matter which one was on top. Didn't matter how many there were. Well, it didn't matter how many there were. But it didn't matter whether the negative was on top or on bottom because there was only one negative. That means our answer is going to be negative. Next example. Negative one and a half divided by negative nine over seven. When you're dividing fractions, they have to be improper. You can't have mixed numbers. That's why we don't like mixed numbers in algebra. So I need to go ahead and change this to an improper fraction. 2 times 1 is 2 plus the 1 on top. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 makes that a negative 3 over 2 divided by negative 9 over 7. It didn't change the sign of this. All I did was work right here. The negative is still out there. Now, it's true we have to divide fractions, and it's true we need to worry about our signs. But I'm going to go ahead and figure out the sign thing now so we can just deal with the dividing part because dividing fractions isn't as fun as it looks like. So, is our sign going to be positive or negative? It's going to be positive because they are the same thing. They have like signs. They're both negative, but both negatives means that our answer is going to end up being positive. So, when we get to the answer in the end, we'll just keep it positive, whatever it is. So, for dividing fractions, you do keep the first fraction, change from division to multiplication, and flip. Keep, change, flip. So I want to keep the first fraction the same, change from division to multiplication, and then flip over the last fraction. 7 over 9. Now see, I didn't even bother writing down any of the signs or worrying about the signs because we've already figured out what our sign is going to be in the end. Now we're just doing the arithmetic. Since we're multiplying, we can cross cancel. So 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 9 three times, and then multiply straight across. 1 times 7 is 7, 2 times 3 is 6, and I don't care that it is improper, we want it to stay improper. And we said our answer was going to be positive no matter what it was, so it's a positive 7 over 6. Our next example we need to talk about. I don't know if you've had to memorize this in the past or not. So I need you to memorize it now if you, don't, you haven't already. 
It's really important. When you have zero divided by a number, your answer is zero. Zero on top. means your answer equals zero. But when you have any number divided by zero, your answer is undefined. Zero on bottom is bad stuff. It's against the law. So it means your answer has to equal undefined. You actually write it out and everything. It's because there's no definition for having a zero on the bottom. That's why we call it undefined. You cannot say no solution. That means something different in mathematics. You cannot say it doesn't exist because technically that means something different in mathematics too. All we're saying is that it is undefined. Okay? Undefined. Some books, in fact your book I think says that it is not possible. It's true, it's not possible to get it because it's undefined. However, comma, I, as the teacher here, am telling you on your papers, you need to write undefined when the zero is on the bottom. The zero is on the top, it's defined, it's defined as zero. But a zero on the bottom is undefined, and that's the answer that you write. Okay. Let's look at an example and see how you would do it. Number 36 on page 38. It says negative 9 times 4 divided by negative 1 minus 2. This is the whole crux of the situation. This problem right here. It not only has multiplication and division in it, it also has subtraction, which means by default it has to have addition in it. The question is, what are you going to do first? Go ahead, pause the tape. Let's see what you do. And we'll talk about it in a second. And we're back. So, what I would do first, because of this fraction bar, that tells you you have to do all the stuff on top, and then do all the stuff on the bottom, and then you can divide your two numbers at the end. So on top, it's a multiplication problem. Negative 9 times 4 is a negative 36. So that's my top number. Then I come back to do the bottom. On the bottom, I have negative 1 minus 2, which has to change to negative 1 plus the opposite of 2, which is negative 2. Negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. I wrote this down here because some people just do that in their head. And if you're one of those people that just does it in your head, that's great. I'm okay with that. But if you're not, I went ahead and wrote it down so that you could see how we got the negative 3. Now that I have it down to one number on top of one number, that makes it the division problem. So 3 divides into 36 12 times. And since they are like signs, that means our answer is positive. So it's going to be a positive 12. Not nearly as hard as I tried to make it out to be. 
but it did test all the different areas. Speaking of testing and all the different areas, hold that thought. Classwork for today. On page 38, numbers 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and 30. And then homework on page 38. Numbers 9 through 35 odd. And number 45. Okay. Let's have a little chit chat. I'll get where you can see because I know you love me. Okay. Um, we have done, sort of see me. We have done sections 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8. That means I'm done with chapter 1. And you're almost done with chapter 1. That means you're about to have your first chapter 1 test. You get one day tomorrow, not today. You get one day to review. The problems that you will review are already written down on your calendar. If they're not on your calendar, check your mom's calendar. They're on one of the two. Um, they're in your book, so you'll be able to find the answers to them. I need you to work on that like it's a real test. So you need to sit down with your book, open it up, and pretend like you're taking a test. In other words, no distractions, no being asked to do anything. If that means that you are getting up early before everybody else gets up to do this, that's fine. But it has to be a time when you are not distracted, when you are not interrupted, when you are not listening to music, when you are not playing around with anything because when it comes time for you to take your test your mom really is going to time you on it we can't give you forever to take a test anymore that's not the way it works in high school so you need to be sure that you are doing it like it's a test so we can see how you're doing no none of this let's do a problem and check and see if it's right go ahead do the whole thing do all that you can and if there's something you don't know how to do go ahead and star it or highlight it and wait until you're done trying every single problem then you go to the back of the book and you check and you see if what you got was correct don't look after every problem that's not a good way of doing things so when you go through to do your um, review tomorrow go ahead sit down like it's the whole test take it every single problem write it down write as neat as you can because you know if you don't write neatly I might not understand what it is and I'll have to mark it wrong sorry that's the way it works so write as neatly as you can and check your answers in the back of the book and when you're done then you can look and see if you were right or not and there's no angst to it. There's no, oh my God, I didn't finish. There's no, I didn't do it in a certain number of time. You can time it, find out how long it took you, whether or not you need to speed up on some things, whether or not you can speed up on some things. The amount of problems that you got on your review is, hold on a second, I have to look at the review. The amount of problems that you've got on your review, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, about the number that you'll have on the test, because you'll have about 20 problems on the test. Each problem is going to be worth the same stuff, so you can figure out that. Um, I really did look at the test before I picked these problems. 
so that you would know. And I did not make out the test based on the book. I made out the test based on what you really need to know. So if there are sections in this book that you think I should have gone over that I didn't go over, then that's your bad thinking. Because there's a reason <laughs> why I waited on it. Um, there is a word problem in here that comes from section 1.9 and we're not going over section 1.9. It's because I think you already know how to do that. That's why we didn't go over it. And there's only one word problem on the test. So I'm not too worried about it. I think you're going to do wonderful on the test. But if you don't do wonderful on the test, that's okay. There are a lot of tests. There are 15 chapters in this book and making a not so good grade on one test is not going to kill you. It'll take you a while to get used to taking tests. So, or taking tests this way. So, don't freak out about that. Um, so, it was great doing chapter one. I hope you're as, as excited about chapter two as I am. I'm just glad to get on to more interesting stuff because this stuff I know you already know. So I'll be glad when we get to some, some stuff that you don't know yet, which might be hard to get to. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I will see you. Not tomorrow, not the next day, because your test will be two days from now. I will see you three days from now. Have a good day. Do your homework.